everyone. Welcome to It's All About Prevention, Rehab Paradigm. This week's topic is on rectomyelitis. Some of you may have heard of it due to the recent cases that was brought up in the news and its severe complications after a steam flask. In this video, we'll be getting Dr. Francisco to shed some light to us on the whole pathophysiology of rectomyelitis and also its life-threatening complications. And on Thursday, we would have uh, Joseph, our Chief Physiotherapist, and Sofian, an Exercise Physiologist from Aileron Wellness, to share to us more about the recovery from the episode itself and also at the same time the prevention of rectomyelitis. Without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Francisco. Hi everyone, it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I am a specialist nephrologist and a transplant immunologist working at Francisco Kidney and Medical Center in Mount Elizabeth Novena Hospital. Treating patients with different kidney problems, including acute and chronic kidney failure, glomerulonephritis, that is inflammation of the kidneys, dialysis and kidney transplantation, as well as patients with different kidney related conditions like type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, high blood pressure, metabolic syndrome and excessive weight. I have also a health enhancement, holistic weight loss and functional fitness company called Olympia Lifestyle by Dr. Francisco, where I am the health coach empowering people to adopt a healthy and active lifestyle, but where safety is an important concern. Rhabdomyolysis occurs after severe injury to the muscles, causing the death of muscle fibers with the release of their intracellular components into the bloodstream, where these components can cause a lot of problems because suddenly your clearing system becomes overwhelmed by a large amount of toxic byproducts circulating in your blood. This can lead to severe electrolyte imbalances and even clogging the filters of your kidneys by the release of large molecules that normally are inside the muscle cells, leading to potential kidney failure, and in some cases, this can be life-threatening. It is true that this not happen in all cases, but it is a big gamble. During my years of experience as a doctor, I have treated different patients with rhabdomyolysis sometimes due to trauma, burns, infections, reactions to medications, alcohol, drugs, or toxins, exposure to extreme temperatures, certain hormone or electrolyte imbalances, autoimmune inflammation of the muscles, or even genetic predisposition. But lately, in my private practice in Singapore, I have seen a surge of cases of rhabdomyolysis in young people practicing excessive or intensive repetitive exercise for example, the so-called spinning classes, especially for first-timers. I have seen so many cases lately that one of my patients told me I should be called the spinning doctor. Most people suffering the exercise-induced rhabdomyolysis fortunately eventually do well, but they need to be admitted to the hospital for a few days for intravenous hydration and for close monitoring with a lot of hassles, and costs and worries. Plus many of them have a very slow recovery and need to go for several physiotherapy sessions to then slowly go back to their normal activities after a long period of inactivity and lots of frustrations. The typical symptoms of rhabdomyolysis are severe muscle pain and weakness, like feeling that your muscles have been torn apart. In the case of the spinning classes, this localizes mainly to the thighs, in particular to the quadriceps. Occasionally, severe inflammation and swelling of the muscles can cause something we call compartment syndrome, which can put into jeopardy the circulation to the legs, which is a big deal, sometimes requiring a surgery to release the excessive pressure inside the leg. But what actually makes people worry and what triggers people to go and see the doctor is when they start having red or brown urine. That scares everyone, which is caused by the excess of red proteins released by the muscle into the bloodstream, which then pass to the urine via the kidney filters. But as I mentioned, sometimes these red proteins 
can clog the kidneys, causing kidney failure. If tested, the urine dipstick shows positive blood, but without red blood cells on detailed examination of the urine. That is because these red proteins are similar to hemoglobin, which is the protein that carries oxygen and is found inside the blood. Iller patients can feel very weak, have fever, and have symptoms of kidney failure, like less production of urine, breathlessness due to fluid retention, or further electrolyte imbalances. Or they can even develop other severe complications like something we call disseminated intravascular coagulation. That is the formation of lots of clots in your body, imagine. Some patients can have an imbalance of several electrolytes in the blood. For example, high potassium or low calcium of the blood becomes very acidic, which can potentially cause erratic rhythms of the heart or even circulatory collapse and potential death. In the hospital, we give painkillers to patients with rhabdomyolysis, hydrate the patient intravenously to flush the kidneys and prevent kidney failure, while closely monitoring the kidney function. If any electrolyte abnormality occurs, we correct it. We monitor the levels of a protein called creatinine kinase, or CK, to assess the risk for kidney failure and electrolyte complications, which also helps us to monitor the response to our therapies when the CK levels start dropping. Some patients with kidney failure might need even dialysis for a while, and some sort of nutritional support. The important thing is that exercise-induced rhabdomyolysis can be prevented with the correct exercise approach and strategy. For that, as you are the experts, I will let you carry on. It was certainly my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me here. And remember, do exercise safely. I am Dr. Francisco, wishing you the best possible health. Take care. Bye-bye.